once again, Honey Lamb from uh, Toyota. It's not called Toyota University anymore, right? No, it's um, just um, product sales and engagement. Excellent. So basically, the guy who knows everything <laughs> about the new car. The last time we drove was uh, for the 86 in yeah. um, Ojai. Ojai in California. Now we're outside Austin, Texas with the new Toyota CHR. And uh, why don't we begin by explaining what is the name name? The CHR stands for Coupe High Rider. And there's a lot of elements of the vehicle that actually represents that name very accurately. So the, the whole profile of the vehicle looks very dynamic and aggressive and sporty looking. And with the hidden door rear handles, as you look from far away, it actually looks like a two-door vehicle. Yeah. But it's called high rider because it's a crossover as well. So the underbar looks very strong from a design standpoint. You have nice 18-inch wheel with big fender flares um, on, uh, protruding out of the corners. So very aggressive. That's why the coupe high rider name is very applicable. Okay. And uh, going back a little bit with the history of the car, this car debuted as a prototype for Scion, right? Like three years ago around that? Yeah, I want to say um, 2015 yeah. um, at the LA Auto Show, it came out as a Scion prototype concept vehicle. And then um, when Scion went back under the Toyota umbrella and we actually converted it back to a Toyota vehicle. Yeah. yeah. From the Scion legacy, we obviously have the 86, which was called the FRS. Uh, correct. Uh, we have the uh, IM or the II, IA, right? Yes, yeah, so the IM was uh, was Scion IM, now it's called the Corolla IM. Okay. And then before it was the Scion IA, now it's called the Yaris IA, and now we have the CHR. So with this one in particular, I mean like uh, Toyota has been trying to attract the younger buyers with the new design, more technology and all of uh, other elements to the cars. This one really, I think, is the boldest statement in that sense, at least with design, right? Yeah, there's a lot of um, design elements. Like, if you actually look at the vehicle from the outside, there's a lot of lines that accentuates the surface. And if you touch the surface, there's a lot of curves, give it kind of a concave, convex motion. Yeah. It's a really unique vehicle. I don't think we have any of this, you know, design ever, yeah, ever in, in, our, in our lineup. It's very exciting. Yeah, I mean, like, Toyota has always known up for its reliability and like quality and like good engineering and all that, but like design, to be honest, wasn't one of the things that people would think <laughs> first about Toyota, but now that's changing. Yes, um, you know, aside from a seat truck, we have a lot of other vehicles that's having more exciting design Yeah, elements. the new Corolla looks pretty nice, yep. the new Prius, everything. Yep. This car is uh, based on the C platform, which is the same one on the new platform that is the global new platform that yeah. the, the Prius is built on Correct. and everything. So it's on the new TNGA platform, which stands for Toyota New Global Architecture. Okay. And it is the same platform that is modified platform of what this Prius is on, the C TNGA platform. So currently, this is the only the second car built on that platform. That is correct. Okay. In the U.S. here. It's a. Uh, it's not compact. I mean, like I always get a little bit confused <laughs> with the. Uh, segmentation of the sizes. Uh -huh. I mean, I wish it was like clothing, small, medium, large. I think the best but, way to look at it is the segment. Exactly, okay. the entry level um, SUV. Okay. That's the best way to look at it. And this competes uh, with like CHR or? CHR competes with um, Mazda CX-3, okay. um, Honda HR-V, mm -hmm. um, possibly the Jeep Renegade. Yeah, so it's a segment that is growing really fast. A lot of people are getting into more in crossover, small SUVs than, than cars. Yep. So very important. And uh, this car is launching as a 2018. 18, correct. And you already expect to sell 30,000 of them this year. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, well, we, 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 we feel that with the design of the vehicle, the safety package, the uh, standard Toyota Safety Sense P, as well as the handling aspect of the vehicle, it's going to attract a lot of um, customers. And I think the price is going to attract a lot of customers. And being, I mean, had been designed as an original Scion product, but like pretty much monospec. I mean, you still have two versions of it, but that's it, right? Yes, XLE and XLE Premium, the two trims. Yeah, and what's the difference and what, what more equipment do you get and what's the pricing? So the pricing for XLE um, starts around 20, mid $22,000 um, and it has a lot of standard features. You know, some, some of the stuff like 18 inch alloy wheel, you have your dual zone auto AC, you have 10 airbags, hill start assist control, and there's a list of standard features. And we go to premium, you add you have all of that plus push start button, you have heated front seats, you have blind spot monitoring, like the one we're in here today. Yeah. 
And uh, this is under 25 still, right? Yes, it is under 25. And regardless of XLU, XLU Premium, again, TSSP is standard. But more importantly is that the handling dynamics, yeah. right? The front suspension and rear suspension both have Sax dampers. It's a German performance company that we worked with to create the dampers for it. And this car was tuned on the Nuremberg ring. I saw that, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I mean, it's not a sports car, but you can have like some fun driving it. Yes. I mean, like definitely with the looks and that kind of technology, you mm -hmm. can really make it like a, a, a fun car to drive. Uh, the other thing is truly a five passenger car, right? Yeah, it is. It, you can actually fit an adult back there comfortably, which not a lot of our competitors can say about that. And with the seat folded down, you have ample cargo room for all your um, gears. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, the powertrain. Uh, only one yes. version of it, right? One version, yep. It is a 2.0 engine that has 144 horsepower and 139 feet-pound of torque and it's paired exclusively to a CVT transmission with seven shift points and also have three drive modes, right? Eco, normal, and sport. And um, the only thing I think are, it's missing here is maybe a sunroof mm. and uh, all-wheel drive. What is that? So, no sunroof because we have the chief engineers that wanted to maintain the handling performance of the vehicle. Yeah. And all-wheel drive, I mean, Notice this is this is original Scion vehicle, so we want to keep the price point down, a price point that is attracted to our consumers. So that's why right now it's only gonna come in the front wheel drive configuration. But we are studying to see if customer demands the all wheel drive. Well, thirty thousand in the first year and sixty thousand, I understand the second year. Yes. So you're gonna have a lot of uh, case studies <laughs> to, to analyze that and much more. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Andy, for thank this you quick. Overview of the car uh, driving here around uh, Austin, Texas, and now we're gonna we arrive at this beautiful winery, and that's where we're gonna have our break from the drive today, and uh, drive back to. Oh, one thing that I noticed. So we have this uh, feature in the car, and we just turned the camera. This is it, the rear view camera is no longer here. Yep, it is now on the rear view mirror, and that's because um, you know we were given the opportunity to have a standard auto dimming mirror and they wanted to integrate the camera into that as well. So we thought customer would like the auto dimming mirror standard feature and one whole a package. And now that we're here, let's talk about this uh, cluster now. Like uh, this is standard obviously also. Yes, yeah, standard regardless of trim. It's gonna be the same audio system. Has Bluetooth parent, AHA application, all your normal features like AM, FM, HD radio, voice recognition as well. Um, there is no navigation. Uh, for but through the AHA thing, you can pair up a phone and put it in, or not? Well, AHA is an application where it helps you, like for businesses and different. Um, oh, okay. Sport audio, um, that sort of stuff. It doesn't give you navigation. So there will not. I mean, if you want navigation, you have to use your phone, I guess, with a mount. Hopefully. Correct. Correct. Hands free. Yep. Okay. Well, I mean, again, for uh, twenty-five thousand dollars or less with a top model, I mean, there's a lot of technology in the car, and like. Safety features. Safety features. Uh, what, that thing is something that I always uh, talk <laughs> about to people when they ask me about what should I buy, why. The safety features really like make a lot of sense and uh, hopefully you don't get to test them. <laughs> yes. That means you're in trouble. But they really work well and, and, and really it's a nice investment at the beginning because eventually it's gonna save you money because yeah. it's gonna avoid accidents. Because much, our TSSP, right? um, you know, we're the only vehicle in the segment to offer a pre-collision system with active braking yeah. and only compact crossover to offer the dynamic radar range cruise control, you know, standard. Yeah. Not a lot of competitors do that. This is all standard. And a lot so, of airbags. a few compromises here and there, but overall I think and safety great. first. Yep. I mean, always. And, and great uh, value package. Great value package. So, well, yeah. and thank you very much again. Thank you for another drive uh, with Toyota, uh, this time here in Austin. So thank you. Until next, next time. Bye. Bye.